Oh, Kenobi. Kenobi happened. Yeah. Yeah. First two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I've been hearing about that. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. I've heard some pretty harsh things about that show Have right you? now. Yeah, yeah. What have you heard? Uh, just bad overall everything. Oh, that's like, a lie. I've just seen people like... Criti- like oh, that's not I've, true at all. I, I, I don't even seen comprehensive reviews of it, mm. but I just see a person here saying the direction's terrible, the editing's terrible, the cinematography is terrible, and mm. someone else will say the acting's terrible, the narrative sucks, it's boring, it's bland, and then like, different criticisms all around... To the point where it's become very comprehensive of seeing the same things I don't, criticized multiple uh, times. No, I don't agree with most of the things you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, the acting's great, first off. Ewan McGregor's killing it. Love it. That was the one thing I heard. Well, the, that he was, the, uh, let me re- clarify. The acting of our main cast is great. Uh-huh. Any ancillary characters, they're pretty not great. Mm-hmm. Um, direction is fine. I think it's better than most of these uh, Disney Plus shows has been. Um, the writing is also fine. It's fine. Um, there are no lines that make me cringe or make me go, ugh, can't believe they Mm -hmm. just said that. There's, um, um, it's enough. There's a kid actor, um, that is heavily prominent in the first two episodes. I don't know if the actor is going to be prominent throughout the whole series or just these first few episodes or so. Um, but the the that young actor I think is doing pretty pretty solid job for a kid. Good. Um, she's not phenomenal, but you know she's solid. Mm-hmm. Kid. Um, you know it's a kid. Yeah. But it's a damn good kid. Like in compare, like especially with Star Wars and its history of mm-hmm. kid actors, like this one's okay. Yeah. Um. Hasn't been a lot of action yet. Um, and what has been there. Hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Hit or miss. Very waiting, slower show. I'm waiting for... We're, we're, we're building. Mm. We're definitely building. Okay. Um, Some of the things I've liked, some of them I haven't liked. Um, And then, yeah. So, mm. like, yeah. Uh, there's been great concepts, great ideas, great things that I didn't think about um, that I should have thought about. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because we made it about halfway through the first episode, maybe a little less than halfway. And I was like, oh... This is what they're going to do. And then mm-hmm. I laid it out beat for beat. I watch it with my mom. Yeah. And I, I laid it out beat for beat. And she was like, so you already know where this is going. And I was like, well, mom, we all know where it's going. Mm-hmm. It's just like there's only so many directions they could take to get there. So mm-hmm. like once they gave us like the beginnings of setup, I was like, oh, OK, this is where they're going. Yeah. Because there's nowhere else to go. It set it up and it's going to execute it all the way through in the way that it's going to. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. Um, but I'm giving it time. I'm giving it. Some, it could like I could get to the end of it and be like, meh, meh, meh. It's whatever. It's whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'll ever be like it. Man, that sucked. But I, I, I like uh, Book of Boba Fett sucked. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. People were not happy with that show. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Um, But, you know, I think I'll get to the end of it. And I'll be like, it was OK. Mm-hmm. It was good. Uh, I, I'm just hoping it's going to build to something to me. Be like. Yeah, it started slow, but man, when it got to episode four, you know, mm-hmm. oh, whew, uh-huh. is what I'm hoping. Uh, anyways, Connor, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about some video games. Mm-hmm. What's poppin', players? Welcome mm-hmm. back to the Two Penny Games Cast, episode 96. I am your host, Tavon Boffo, here with my good friend and co-host, Connor Elliott. Say hello to the people, Connor. Hi. Now... Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, this show is where me and Connor come to you and we give you the new news concerning the video game industry. We each come to you with two topics, two pennies, if you will, and we each give you our two cents on them. Uh, you can catch this show every Monday, 8 a.m. Central Time, YouTube.com slash 2 Cast or mainstream podcast services of your choice. Uh, but... If just talking about video games isn't enough for you, you'd rather see some gamers have some true gamer moments, well, then go hop over to uh, twitch.tv slash 2 games where we stream gaming content, honestly, pretty irregularly. But (laughs) every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central Time, uh, me and my good buddy Phil, we sit down and we put on a little show called Hype, H-Y-E-P, Have You Ever Played, in which one of us shows the other video games they've never played before. Right now, Phil is working his way through Sly 2, Band of Thieves. I just finished off um, Crash 2. Uh, and, you know, stay tuned. YouTube.com slash 2 Gamescast for the after hype, after the hype reviews for both of those. Can't have spoilers. 
no spoilers. No. Well, we've also only recorded the Sly one uh, uh, after the hyper review. So. <laughs> okay, I need to edit that and put that up. I'm lazy, ladies and gentlemen. L- l- who would have guessed? Full time job and fucking mm-hmm. doing all this actually. Well, work's never fun. Huh? Work's never fun. Never. Yeah, no. You just no. Do it. <laughs> and and also we're having a special announcement near the end of the show after our what we've been playing segment of a new segment we're gonna do which is gonna require much more time from us and uh i don't know how we're gonna do it but we're gonna do it ladies and gentlemen we'll see now let's go ahead let's jump straight into our first topic of the day connor your first penny Mm -hmm. you dropped in right at the last minute here uh xbox boss says he will recognize raven software's union after acquisition closes this is a kotaku article by cc zhang uh, in today's internal all hands meeting with Xbox Game Studio uh, employees, head of Xbox Spencer, Phil Spencer said that he would recognize Raven Software's union. This came after the QA testers at Raven voted to form the first labor union at a major studio. Uh, during a previous all hands meeting a year and a half ago, Spencer said that he didn't have much experience with unions. In today's all hands, Spencer addressed that previous statement, quote, Linda Norman and I have been spending a lot of time educating our, uh, myself on unions, Spencer said. Uh, we absolutely support the employees' rights to organize and form unions. Kotaku was able to verify this quote from a video taken of Xbox's remote all hands meeting. Quote, once the deal closes, we would absolutely support an employee's organization that's in place he said uh we think it is a right of employees and something that can be a part of a relationship between a company and people who work at the company spencer stresses that microsoft does not currently have a relationship with communication workers of america nor the union game workers and alliance the company's 69 billion dollar deal to acquire publisher activision blizzard is being investigated by the federal trade commission quote but when the deal closes we will absolutely recognize he added uh kotaku reached out to xbox but was not able to contain obtain a comment at the time of publication according to axios microsoft had previously said that it didn't object to activision blizzard's recognition of raven union however today's all hands statement from spencer is the first time that microsoft has directly committed to recognizing the union now we we uh we covered it uh this is a long-standing story that has been kind of like you can trail from uh early days of this show to to today um, and this is sort of, uh, like our first step to, to what we were kind of hypothesizing when we heard about this acquisition from Microsoft that, okay, this is them. They're, they're coming in. They're going to correct this ship. They're going to start moving things forward, hopefully. Mm-hmm. And then this is, a, this is one of a few first early steps to, to sort of, um, solidify that hypothesis mm-hmm. to sort of, sort of give us uh common people some comfort uh in the future of activision blizzard that being said though even though he did say that he is going to uh honor the uh union and and i don't really have any doubts that he will uh that he won't Mm -hmm. but there is always still the possibility of some kind of walk back coming in when they finally acquire them so don't exactly just in any situations like this until Mm -hmm. everything goes through properly uh don't stop focusing on it, and yep. if it does go wrong, that's when some action should be taken, possibly to, you know, not buy certain Xbox products until something like that is done. Exactly. Who knows? It's not but enough to just to just be like, hey, this is the story, this is the big travesty of the week or whatever, and then get lost in the news cycle and forget and never follow up on it. That's what sort of this is here and why we're talking about mm-hmm. it still, because there's really not a whole lot to say about this right now. Yeah. Um, but it's important to track that progress, to keep it going, because like you, you can just sort of I don't know about you, but as we've done this show and as we keep following these stories, like as you know, a new headline pops up, uh, my brain goes, oh, wait, no, we've covered this on the show. Mm-hmm. We've you know, we've read this article on on the show. So this is in in um, cor- like this connects to that and this, that and the third. So like there there's sort of like a, a really good way to I keep I'm having to move my my camera oh now mm-hmm. i've messed up your camera oh, now oh. i've done it oh no now i've done it oh, no. just move it yeah, back right there i know my apologies ladies oh, and gentlemen no. it was a pre-show thing that i didn't do <laughs> um anyways so it's important to just kind of keep notes the whole way through and and sort of like almost micro analyze these quotes i think phil spencer is speaking very directly and very plainly here um and i think it paints a very bright future for uh raven studios and hopefully uh activision blizzard as a whole Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and unionization across the video game industry itself 
it doesn't really occur all that much. So it right. is nice to see one of the bigger studios out there showing I mean, the Raven, stuff to recognize it properly. The Raven one was, you know, it's the first one at a major studio. Mm-hmm. You know, there's smaller ones that do that, which is cool and nice. But yeah. like, you know, unionization is a problem in this industry. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't exist in any meaningful way. Um, but we're, we're getting there. Yeah. We're, we're, pu- we're lining up the dominoes for it to start happening. And hopefully... Uh, this is this is a way in which uh, we can really get some get some real tracks and some real uh, mm. uh, momentum here. I also just want to commend Microsoft for always being always looking ahead, mm-hmm. always being kind of ahead of the game um, in what's coming in this industry and in this culture of video games. You know, right now, I would argue they're the leaders in uh like streaming video games uh Mm -hmm. or streaming through the cloud and so forth like you can do it on your phone you can do it on your computer you can do it on your xbox like you could if you have a device you can probably stream a video game through it uh through xbox it's the reason you can play Fortnite on your iphone right now um they're they're you know taking the time to be like okay we should probably start taking unionization seriously and let's see what our approach to that is Mm -hmm. they're 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 really the the I, I'm 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 gonna argue it like in terms of like, um, the flourishment and the growth of of gaming, they're the pack leaders right now, um, because they're they're taking the steps to make sure that the people are taken care of, and you see that even with their practices and how consumer friendly they are with things like Game Pass and backwards compatibility and all these things, their their work and accessibility in gaming and so forth. Like, in terms of just getting everybody to be able to play games and getting everybody who makes games into a safer place. Um, Microsoft is in terms of like the big publishers, they're really kicking ass right now. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they keep doing that. You know, we'll, we'll see in the future. And we'll, we'll once be it here. actually goes through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, been a long anyway. time. This, uh, this acquisition, it, it, it seems like a long but time. But it was going, we always knew it was going to. And then once yeah. the government got involved, we were like, all right, this <laughs> is going to take a while. Uh, as the government does. Anyways, Connor, moving on to the second story. Uh, my first penny of the day. I want to talk about this uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor trailer, man. It looks fun. It does look fun. All right. You know, I like, agree. first of all, it's a beautiful trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got, uh, it's obviously not in engine. It's a pre-rendered trailer, whatever. Which it's just is good because it would, it, obviously it's farther out as you'll come to see later on if you're yeah, watching yeah, this yeah. for the first time. But... Yeah, I'm 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 happy that they're not doing gameplay because they don't yeah. need to. No, 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 not right yeah. now. And certain companies definitely would try to show you some level of gameplay. But, but I like not. I like a lot of what they're showing here, a lot of imagery and stuff. I love uh, the continued growth of the Inquisitors and how that all works. This looks like we're fighting. Uh, that, he, that looks like an Inquisitor. It could be that could go either way. That could be an Inquisitor or it could, that's the I think it's that guy. That's the Grand Inquisitor right there. No, nah, because they, they wouldn't have him hooded up like that. Um. So I'm curious if he's if we're if we're taking on a Sith Lord um, in this new game, which I, granted we took on a Sith Lord in the last game, but like um, an actual, you know, fair fight, so to speak. Yeah, one, yeah. Actually, one, one that was like, coming. what is this dude in the tube? Is that him? It looked like is it Cal? for a second. Is it a clone? Which made me think, does this game have co-op? Yeah, it's going to be a yeah. co-op game. We got we, we dive in deeper into the into the from software inspirations here. We're going to have some co-op playing on. You see my if based off this trailer alone mm-hmm. my fear of that is one of the I, I liked the combat system of the first game it was good yeah but there was room for improvement oh you yeah. know by the end of it i was like okay i'm kind of getting you know uh-huh. tired of this combat system so with the next entry i was hoping you know and i'm still you know pretty optimistic that it's going to improve upon those systems the combat systems yep. and make it even more fun my, my fear my, is my big hope is for level design to be improved yes level design as well but yeah. if with the inter- possible introduction of a uh, co-op i'm afraid they might use that as some sort of a crutch to mm. rather than enhance the gameplay that we already had try to make it you know scale the difficulty a little bit differently to allow for co-op options which you know also could be fun in and of itself but I'm just afraid that that's going to take away from any new gameplay mechanics or yeah. gameplay feel uh, in this next game. That might just be a you know unwarranted worry, though. I don't know. What color did you use in your lightsaber? Uh, purple. Okay. It's always well. Why were you about to judge me? If you were blue, yeah. Only blue? Because that means you were blue. You yeah, blue means police. Oh, that's you know? why. I thought blue meant, I thought blue meant like. 
like uh, what does each color lightsaber represent? So the blue is supposed to be the uh, the, the. Let me turn my nerd my nerd <laughs> you know stuff on. The blue is supposed to like represent someone who's like talented in in dueling. Like they're 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 a swordsmith or a, a, a you know they're a, a swordsman. Uh, green means you're like a little more attuned to the force. I don't know what the others mean. That's mm-hmm. uh, it's the big three. And then red means you're a bad guy. That's yeah. all I really know. I think that's the main original th- idea of it probably yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, and it was mostly it was mostly driven through stuff that's no longer canon now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. This is cool. This excites me. I like the direction they're going. I like the tone that they're going. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hoping this means that we're going to step up our story telling uh, aspect of it, which, you know, I thought was fine in the first game, but, you know, definitely lacked in. And uh, some of those story beats and emotional beats weren't fully developed, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, yeah, I'm uh, there's there's actually enough intrigue here for me to where I go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Connor. Connor. Hold on. What did I just see? Oh, those are turrets. Okay, I thought <laughs> I thought the I thought the cloaked figure here was shooting the things oh. from because I've been watching Star Wars Rebels because that, mm-hmm. with Kenobi and then Star Wars Celebration is going on right now. I'm in a Star Wars high right now. Yeah, man. I'm just loving everything Star Wars right now. Uh, the main character in Rebels, his lightsaber uh, also functions as a blaster. Oh, so like okay. he'll he'll go, he'll pop off a few shots and then swing at you with his saber and then pop a couple more mm-hmm. shots. Yeah, it's like a cute little thing that he does. So I thought this was what he what our cloaked figure was doing, which you know very much intrigued me for no character reasons. Just like I just thought it would be cool to to have that in a video game. Yeah. Um. He's repaired his lightsaber. I see. Mm-hmm. Or he's or he's he's done something here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. No, this is the default double because he's duels. He's du- no. Wait, no, 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 no. This is a, is this a single emitter? What is going on here? We're down to just the one blade again. What's going on here? From so or uh, not from so uh, <laughs> respawn? What are we doing here? Maybe it's some special thing. I don't know. Die. One thing I do like is that it's not really. Uh, it's playing off its own merits, you know, because it's easy for a Star Wars trailer to include a lot of Star Wars things mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. This one doesn't really. A lot of things it even shows is things like the ship in the first game the interior of it so it seems like it's kind of focusing do you more like on how a... you recognized that interior yeah like i don't love the design of that ship but the interior of that ship i actually do really like. i do too yeah. yeah it works and i was able to recognize it like i saw that and i was like oh this is their ship i wonder what yeah. happened yeah, Ooh, yeah we crashed somewhere yeah. something's going on you know all that but i do enjoy that they're trying to focus on a on a story aspect of this mm-hmm. that isn't just the usual we're going against the galactic empires type stuff which is kind of what these things would usually end up leaning into. Well, it, it, and it's it, it, it's placed in a period of time to where, like, nothing can be too big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because big things are coming, and big things just happened. Yeah. So, uh, the, the Cal Kestis' story always has to remain small, which means it must be personal. Yeah. Um, and so, I'm, I'm very curious as to where they're going to take the direction from here. Um, and whatever this, I, it looks like him. It might it be does. a clone. Like, I don't know. It was it, the facial features right there that just look like. Yeah, that yeah. looks like him, right? Which is really long hair. Like, yeah, that's, I don't know, man. I don't know. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. But it's also like, it's a like a rundown facility of some core. So it seems like, type, it's old, like it was oldly made. Like, So is know. it him or is something else going on here? Is this, is this a, is this a Jedi that has been, you know, stuck in this back to tank for a couple of years That was now? my second thought. What is, what is going on here? Guess we'll find it would out. be weird to have a your your white man protagonist and then find like the key to it be another white man. Though. Yeah, it's Star Wars. Like, That's what? what it was originally. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, only, only Lando was in the original movie. Everyone else was white in that one. It was a Star- snowstorm. <laughs> Jeez, that's not true. But okay, mm. uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in it. I'm I'm yeah, I'm ready for I'm ready for more uh, Jedi. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm uh, Jedi games. That's yeah. that's that's fun. That's exciting for me. Connor, what it also is exciting for me is uh, Sony is looking to wrap up this this PlayStation 4 here, man. That gets you excited? Yeah. Yeah. It's the end of the old guard. I know. The old guard being modern still. Oh, sure. I, mm-hmm. I, I get, you know, but we have the new. We have the new new. Now, I understand not everyone can get their hands on the new new. But anyways, let's get, let's get into this, all right? IGN article, Casey David Mu- uh, Muir Taylor. Uh, Mur- Muir? Muir Taylor. Muir? whatever sony expects to be de- sorry uh casey sony expects to be done with the ps4 games by 2025 at 
At the latest Sony investor presentation, Sony revealed that it plans to be done with PS4 games by 2025. Excuse me. Hmm. Additionally, the company also explored the growth they've had in the PC and mobile. Ooh, you got a little, I don't know, know where this government is coming from. I've been talking for mm-hmm. fucking 20 minutes and here I am. Uh, also explore growth they've had in the PC and mobile realms uh, and use numbers to examine the past and predict the future of releases. In the 2019 fiscal year, almost all Sony releases were on PS4, but the estimated spread for 2022's fiscal year accounts for Sony's recent success on PC and includes their foray into mobile as well. For 2025, there is nary a mention of the PS4. Instead, half the graph broadcasts releases for the PS5. Sony expects that PC should account for around 30% and mobile 20% for the rest of that fiscal year's releases. Uh, Many current games like Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West can be found on both PS4 and PS5, but according to Sony's projections, that will be a thing of the past within three years. Elsewhere, the presentation largely focuses on how the company plans to expand its reach to more people. What it's uh doing to get there and what it's uh and what is current and what is currently working oh and what is working currently i'm dyslexic apparently uh one thing that is working is sony's dive into the world of pc gaming the company is projected to make a staggering 300 million dollars in net sales at the end of this fiscal year next march their venture towards mobile and pc gaming aligns with sony's goal to move from a console-centric approach quote, to a future where large elements of our community extend beyond the console. There have been several big name uh, PS5 only releases such as Returnal and Deathloop that have found success despite being only available on one Sony console with the release of Sony's first official PS5 bundle. Let's hope we're moving to a future where even more will be available. Uh, So one, this isn't surprising, Mm -hmm. you know, when a new console comes out, it's time to you know retire the old the process begins even though it could take a little while that's just the yep. standard yeah always and, has been and and it seems to be taking even a little longer this time around just because pandemic uh the success of the playstation 4 um and you know it, we are we are in a space with the ps5 right now and this is just kind of hardware in general where upgrades are minimal mm-hmm. you know but they grow like eventually we'll get to the point to where a PlayStation five game cannot be played on a PS four. It's impossible. Yeah. The last of us part two <clears throat> does not look like the last of us remastered. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. even though the last of us remastered was a PS three game mm-hmm. or like, uh, what's an early PS four game like kill zone shadow fall. Like that doesn't match up to what last of us part two was doing. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of technology, yeah. you know, uh, you just sort of have to like get along, you know, g- you take it as it comes. So like, what does what Returnal is doing today uh, or what Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is doing today is not going to be what um, uh, 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 Ghost of Tsushima 2 mm-hmm. will be doing uh, in 2027, you know, or 28, you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm very, very curious as to um, – how long or how accurate this actually will be you know what games will still be going on is this including like ps uh 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 third party games in general or is this strictly sony first party studio games there's it's not much i could personally say about this i I mean you know it'll be sad to see the ps4 go since i've had so much time with that console and had a lot of good experiences and a lot of good games Damn good console very good console i'll keep mine the one that i currently have i'm not selling that i'll have, no. a, I'll have a collection by the end of it all I that's think. a that's a piece of history right there it is it yeah. is so you know it's it's bittersweet but as you said games are just gonna have to play it on better consoles yeah and the old ones just won't be able to keep up this nope. is how it is it, it it is you know your iphone 4 doesn't work anymore mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying well it does work I mean, I mean, it functions, far. yes, but like you know, you can't get new Twitter on your iPhone. Oh, I 4. need new Twitter. You need new Twitter. <laughs> you need your Elon Musk Twitter <laughs> right here. Anyways, uh, yeah, cool, good to know. Um, you know, Resident Evil fucking nine or whatever isn't coming to the PlayStation Four. Whoopty fucking mm-hmm. you know. And by this <laughs> point, shocker. people have PS fives. That that part of the, uh, of why, you know. People and still play a, PS4 and it, and to the degree a, they do will yeah, go away less. And, we'll, yeah, it's, less. A, it's a growing number of people who have PlayStation 5s. You yeah. know, like it's never like and, and nobody's doubling back to their four once they have the five, mm-hmm. you know, no. with the with the 
you know the use of um backwards compatibility finally being in use uh in a in a mainstream way here like i i've turned on my ps4 a handful of times because it's in the living room and Mm -hmm. that's what i use to play games with my mom you know but when i'm playing games no i'm not touching the fucking ps4 Mm -hmm. what do i look like (laughs) you know anyways uh but keep your eyes on that ladies and gentlemen more uh good news for us and what and what to know about i forgot to ask you uh, what you've been playing today, Connor? But we'll find that out uh, soon. You're gonna be shocked. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna type in Elden Ring now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, anyways, final topic of the day. My second penny. Uh, listen, PlayStation's going all in on the TV side of things, Connor. Yeah, yeah. here we fucking go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah Let's right, be the story right, right. Another IGN. Uh, Ryan Dinsdale. Sony announces Horizon series for Netflix, God of War series for Amazon, and a Gran Turismo show. Three major PlayStation franchises are getting TV adaptations, with Horizon going to Netflix, God of War to Amazon, and Gran Turismo to a currently unannounced platform or network. Uh, Peacock. Better, uh, better start knocking on some doors. Pe- Peacock. Peacock is amazing. Don't insult that. I'm sure it actually. I, I, pe- people do like Peacock. I've yeah, heard good I things know. about Peacock. Huh? Yeah. Paramount Plus also seems to be doing some good, some good shit. I'll just do HBO Max. I need to get on that. That's all I need. HBO sell. HBO got all the, got all the movies. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? that's important. Yeah, I'm going to HBO. Yeah. HBO and Disney Plus are my are my two big ones right now. Yeah. I'm trying to talk my mom into getting off of Netflix, but who knows? Maybe Horizon will keep me on. Anyways, we're digressing. <laughs> Revealed in an investor briefing on May 26th and confirmed by industry insiders, including David Gibson on Twitter, Sony president Jim Ryan revealed during a Q&A that the company was expanding its entertainment adaptations even further. The long-rumored God of War series and other shows will join PlayStation exclusives, including The Last of Us, Uncharted, and Ghost of Tsushima in being adapted to other media. Though, there's no inclination as to when these series will be released the variety in streaming platforms isn't terribly surprising either as sony hasn't favored any particular service so far the last of us tv show will air will air on hbo for example while a twisted metal series is going to peacock see i told you twisted peacock. metal I've, twisted. I've, I've, guys it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna keep going it's not <laughs> when are we just gonna, gonna let when are we just gonna let some some old things die you know mm-hmm. we don't need to twist them i'm sorry i'm doing the fucking camera thing again i suck Aww. guys i suck anyways uh netflix which will be home to the horizon show has already shown uh, a strong interest in video game adaptations and video games themselves with the likes of its hit league of leagues arcane series and castlevania anime too good good on them mentioning the castlevania and not the witcher mm-hmm. you know great i guess the witcher's more book it's more book related yeah, it's than kind of separated from yeah so games. maybe i'll maybe maybe not all right <laughs> amazon studios meanwhile is currently working on a fallout tv series from the creators of westworld and a mass effect show is also coming to prime video it's unclear if these shows will include characters already featured in the games with gran turismo being the most open-ended as it doesn't really have any characters at all <laughs> revolving solely around track racing horizon on the other hand already has two titles under its belt and developer gorilla games is also thinking about a third game Uh, God of War has been around since 2005 and features eight mainline games, but its 2018 reboot is arguably the best of the bunch, having received incredible praise from players and critics alike. Uh, Yeah, so. Cool. Sure. Sure. One thing that just like makes me roll my eyes, though, whenever I look at this is subscription services have gotten to the point where it's becoming more and more like cable. Because look how much you got to pay for to watch all these different shows. Dog. Dog, you you subscribe to what max four things? You know, you would you each would, at about what ten to twenty bucks a month. That's still way cheaper than cable ever was. Cable, you were paying a hundred fifty dollars no, no, no. a month. It's not the same thing as cable, but it's heading. The oh, way no, it's of cable the same idea everything. where you it's need the, to get this package or that package. To watch or this show yeah, and then watch this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy this package. It's kind of overbearing to the point where I probably won't be watching all these shows because of that. Well, but, action, but well, the joy the joy of these things are, you can cancel whenever you want. You I can. Don't, you know, I don't need Amazon every month, you know? Mm-hmm. I can get it for three months, and then I'll stop, and then I'll, you know, hop over to Disney. What they're hoping is that you set it up and forget about it, is what they're hoping for. Yeah. You know, oh, I set up my Netflix account in 2012, and then I, I haven't even touched it since, but I, I'm too lazy to go cancel it or mm-hmm. whatever the fuck. That's what they're hoping for, yeah. and that's where they get a lot of their money. But 
it, additionally, it's also the whole, uh, we're going to release episodes on a weekly week basis because originally the standard was you came out with a show, you just watch it. Netflix popularized that with the whatever binge. shows they wanted to. Yeah, the binge. The rise of the binge. Which, and I understand the arguments people put forth for not having the binge. I don't, don't like the binge. I don't care, but I, you see, I understand why you don't like the binge. Yeah. The binge. But the way I see it when companies uh, bring up that idea isn't because they're thinking that you'll be able to, uh, you know, experience their piece of work in the best way possible because they want you to you know be on the train as it's going uh-huh. so you're not gonna wait for all the episodes to come out and then buy it because at that point all the episodes came out people stopped talking about it yep. and we know people like watching shows with the community and then discussing you wanna, it you want to be a part of the conversation and and wouldn't you know it most of disney plus's shows six episodes long mm-hmm. that's a month and a half yeah you just bought two months for a month and a half of content you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah so like that that's kind of how that's yeah that's how they're doing it yes. that's how they're, they're getting you that way mm-hmm. i like the week to week mm-hmm. i like being a part of the conversation i like sitting back thinking about it having time to theorize and and you know divulge and 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 uh marinate on what they gave me week to week to week i can't remember what happened in stranger things season two mm. you know why because i binged it one time on one weekend six years ago i i pfft. But I'll, I'll tell you what, I remember at, at the first season of Mandalorian, which was mm-hmm. three years ago or two years ago at this point. Yeah. Uh, I remember, yeah, there's the episode where they're on the prison, the prison ship. Yeah, there's the episode where he's fighting the rhino. Yeah, there's the episode where he, you know, he does this, that and the third. Yeah, I remember episode to episode because I, that was all I had for a week. So I thought about that episode for a week, mm-hmm. you know, and then I thought about the next one for a week. And it's how things like, um, uh, um what was the last what was the last marvel show that came out i don't know it's it's how like yeah. wandavision hit hit you know like where i was like man what the fuck is going on in those first couple episodes i was like what is this beekeeper doing mm-hmm. here there's just a beekeeper climbing out of the sewers what was he <laughs> doing in the sewers and then we found out and we went oh shit that's kind of cool you know mm-hmm. um and, and, and like that stuck with me I don't I don't remember what happened in season three House of Cards because I binged it over a weekend and I when I was done, I was done. I didn't talk to anybody about it here. And it kind of and being part of the conversation. I like it. I like being, mm. anyway, we're not we're into streaming. We're not even talking about the fucking news uh-huh. here, um, but it is tied to it about how you view it, because, yeah. you know, that's the first step. The second step is enjoying it. It's also the option of, OK, so just wait. Mm-hmm. Don't be a part of the conversation and just wait wait six weeks and it'll be done and then you can jump in and watch it all at once yeah we could do that for halo right now or well yeah that's that's the other option <laughs> 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 you know um yeah but to focus here on the on the the news here connor mm-hmm. um god of war coming to amazon it to me the easy and the smart choice for that is to follow the plot of the 2018 game and then have flashbacks to the, the original sort of the original trilogy the big moments of the of those first three games and kind of how uh kratos rose to power in that way so uh those who know know mm-hmm. uh but those who don't uh can atreus works as their sort of the eyes of the audience who doesn't know which is going to be a lot of people when you bring something over to television because it's a whole new audience that all of a sudden will say yeah okay i'll i'll do that exactly whereas video games obviously if they don't play video games they're probably not going to feel any you know compelling reason and then to play you can have games. a lot of and then you can have a lot of fun moments where like in episode two atreus says the line of wow i can't ever imagine killing my father mm-hmm. and kratos goes mm-hmm. He just grunts or whatever. And then you get to episode eight or whatever, and you realize Kratos killed his father. Yeah. And you go, oh, sh-, and you double back on the rewatch and you go, oh, the, the the foreshadow. And mm-hmm. then, uh, you know, all of us video game nerds go, no, you fucking mm-hmm. idiot. Like, cor- anyways, <laughs> um, it's the core of his character. So, yeah, like, I'm going to watch that God of War one for sure. Gran Turismo, that's an easy TV show to make. You could make it whatever you want as long as you got some races going on. That's true. And I will not watch it. <laughs> I'm. I probably won't. Well, I don't like TV. Uh, <laughs> Horizon is the one where I go, oh, that one? Okay. Uh, okay. The, the big, big issue is you're going to have to use CGI. I, yeah. And if the CGI isn't good looking, and we've seen some of these streaming shows not have good looking CGI, and which uh, service is doing that one away, which, okay, again? Netflix. Netflix. Okay. So better possibility for, for good CGI, but 
that's a lot of the game. Stranger Things has pretty good CGI. It does. It does. Yeah. But when you have a world that's entirely built around just walking around and having these giant mm-hmm. machine monsters or smaller ones running around. Granted, you don't do the machine monsters every episode. Which is the other issue, because then do you want it is going to get too bogged down in, you know, human to human relationships in a world where there's literal robot dinosaurs walking around? I think you Game of Thrones it. Game of Thrones it? You make it you make it a political intrigue thing. Did Not this tribe. This tribe is following the, that tribe. I, maybe you follow Aloy, but maybe you maybe you create new characters and flesh out the world in that way. You know, I don't think the world of of Horizon is necessarily well, I guess the games are pretty fu- fucking focused around Aloy, aren't mm-hmm. they? You know, with the whole, like, backstory of what happened in the past and so yeah. forth like that. She so maybe you do her. have Aloy, um, and then you just have her getting caught up in political things all the time and and this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. And then every third episode, like how every third episode you see the dragons, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, in Game of Thrones. Every third episode we see a giant robot and we fight the giant robot. You know? Yeah. Like... You give you give a little here, you take a little there. A lot of a lot of walking on some roads, a lot of oh, yeah. a lot of campsites. You know, I can see a world where this works, but I can also see a world where I go, okay, yeah, this is fucking boring. Yeah, because <laughs> mm-hmm. um, we don't we're not the biggest fans of the world of Horizon Zero Dawn's, and I know people don't. Really I'm a talk- fan of the world of Horizon. I'm not a fan of Aloy. Well, didn't you not really like the culture, like the human, like the civilizations? That no, popped I think up that, the no, I think that, no, it's just the opposite. I think all that's really cool. No, oh, oh, yeah, all that's really cool. All the robots are really cool. Aloy, Aloy is a fucking brick wall, mm-hmm. boring as shit. Sorry, Aloy. Sorry, I like the game though. Mm-hmm. But you haven't beaten the second one yet. I haven't. Neither have I. So. No, <laughs> I don't. I, you know what? I don't know if I'm ever going back to it too. Um, the farther it gets away, the less, the I less and less I want to play it. That's a problem. Um, but yeah, I think like so much of this depends on on how The Last of Us does, I think, mm-hmm. in terms of public perception of these video game shows. Yeah, which is weird to me because I would expect it to see this news when you see success on that front, like a major success. These things take so long to produce mm-hmm. that like you can't like you just get like, all right, we're going all in. But like, let's say The Last of Us comes out. Most of it's good. Some of it's like kind of, oh, I wish I wish the special effects were better or I wish the choreography or the script was a little better here or that, in the, you know, in, mm-hmm. in places or whatever. But most of it's probably pretty fine. And we go, OK, yeah, we liked this bit. Um, by the time we get a God of War show. Sony as a as a producer, granted, you know, they're working with all these different production companies. Sony should be able to sort of cultivate their IP in a way that it'll work. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Hopefully fingers crossed we'll see um it just kind of depends on how everything plays out yeah well we'll just have to wait and see by the way you haven't even seen arcane yet have you no huh it was good wasn't it i keep hearing it was very 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 good very like high high quality one of the highest quality shows that year this it came out this year this year did it come out this year i think it should have yeah like in sometime like in the early early days what is time march no it didn't come out this year hurricane league of legends wasn't that like a fucking october show fuck november ah <laughs> damn it damn it damn it what a bad fuck time connor it's time to move on mm-hmm. to what we've been playing i'm gonna go on first real quick mm-hmm. uh and to kind of continue the conversation i was having last week with you uh i've been playing last of us part two mm-hmm. uh I've I've made it a few more hours in. I'm in I'm into the I'm past uh I'm in Seattle. I'm past the school. Remember the school? Yeah. Very, so I've gotten past the open world bit. Now I'm in the school. This game's great. Mm-hmm. This is a great game. Still high high Fantastic regards for game. it. Naughty Dog stopped doing open world shit. <laughs> Cuz it's it's a drag. Do a, do a, a rail on I the liked rails it, type thing. I liked it the first time and every time after I've liked it less and less with every time they've done it. Mm-hmm. Um Granted, they're getting better every time, but no. Nah, and with a game like The Last of Us, it kind of helps. But it also it just feels so weird that that you drop in, you do that, and then the rest of the game is linear. And my favorite parts of the game are not the open world bit. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, so like Naughty Dog, your your focus is just so much better when it's linear, like on one track. And wouldn't you guess it? Wouldn't you guess it, Connor? Mm-hmm. My least favorite franchise from Naughty Dog up to this point? The open world one. Mm-hmm. Jack and Daxter sucks. Crash Bandicoot's fun. 
uh, Uncharted is un- like, I don't need to speak about how great Uncharted is. I don't need to speak about how great The Last of Us is. Jack and Daxter, what the fuck? Stop doing open world, Naughty Dog. You're not, it's not, that's not who you are. <laughs> it's not who you are. Leave it to Sucker Punch. They do it really well. They're just, uh, uh, sucker punch men. They're fucking, mm-hmm. they're beasts. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm continuing down that path. I'm crafting. I'm, you know, moving around. I'm talking, I'm having these character interactions. I'm reading notes, I'm reading all the notes left behind on people, I'm looking at the environmental storytelling. I'm mm-hmm. shooting people in the face. I'm stabbing people in the throats. It's a great time. Good stealth mechanics in that game, man. Mm-hmm. Can't, uh, can't, can't say it enough. Good stealth. Yeah. Good stealth. Last well, was always was good for its stealth. I mean, that was one of the core aspects of its First gameplay. First one's fine. You don't like that? It's, it's, that game. it's pretty. It's pretty basic. Yeah, but it's this, basically fun. Sure. All right. For, I, I like the simple simpleness of it. Yeah. But, nice. Well, yeah. But like the the three planes of action with the standing and the crouched and the, the prone in two. On top of that, like the AI is smarter and like mm-hmm. it's less like let me just walk around this box real quick. Granted, that's still there, but it's less of that. Like it's a little more like. All right, I need to figure out how to do. It. Okay, so if I kill this guy here, leave that body there, and then like and you can't move the bodies, but mm-hmm. I know th- I know this body will be detected upon. And you know, like they're calling out to each other, they're making sure everybody's okay. The dogs, when I eventually get to the dogs and how they can smell you, mm-hmm. like they smell you, and they you're like they're following your scent and shit. Like that's all really really good. Uh, how clickers work in Last of Us Two way better than the first game, especially on hard on harder difficulties mm-hmm. where man, you better be fucking moving s- slow. Or else they're going to hear you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, when they when they hear you, boy, do they hear you. They know when you're creeping. They know when you're creeping. Uh, but that's only part of what I've been playing this week, Connor. No. And most of my... I would have made it so much further in Last of Us, but Last of Us takes a lot of focus. Mm-hmm. A lot, that's a game that demands your attention. Let me tell you what. I wasn't always in the mood for that. Sometimes I wanted to listen to a podcast on the side. Sometimes I wanted to, to have some music playing or something. Um, or I just wasn't in the mood for something so heavy. So you know what I did, Connor? What would you do? I bought and downloaded Hades onto my PlayStation oh. 5 right there. Yeah, and I've been playing, I've been replaying some Hades, man. It's a good game. Yeah, man. Good I was game. looking at the trophy list and I was like, you know what? This is a hard, this is a long trophy list. Like, it's going to take a long time to get through this list, but it looks like a fun list. This <laughs> is a fun list to get through. Yeah, I played through Hades, so it's not a, not a punishment. No, yeah, exactly. Fun. And uh, the game attached is phenomenal. Yeah. You know, Phil's 2020 game of the year, you know? Um, but, you know, I, 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 I'm just having a blast with Hades, man. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, if you go in with a knowledge of Hades in the beginning, you can get a lot further than you did when you when you went in blind. Let me tell you what. Yeah, I I know. I was on run three and I made it all the way to the to the final boss of the third world. And I was like, I'm here. You you definitely feel that skill is is, is also a factor in the game because, you know, there's lots of upgrades in Hades. Yeah. So you think, okay, a lot of how I'm good relies heavily heavily on that and it still does it still does but it, you're not getting very you're not getting to hades your first run no no well some people definitely can nerds yeah <laughs> the average person definitely can well most likely can anyway uh but it's a skill-based game which is good yeah, yeah. It solidifies it as kind of like an all-around good game yeah. in terms of gameplay at least obviously yeah. it goes you know goes really hard in every other aspect but but it's also like they, they don't they don't give you a lot like you can't build out um uh, uh what it, what is it called when you're building out a like a like a loadout or like a mirror of Nyx? Like, no like a set like a like a um like you can't build your your character like or your you, you can't modify your build oh, in the yeah. way that you can later in the game because they dole out the gods one at a time and they mm-hmm. they they slowly roll out each individual god so like you know, I had like two boons my first run, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And you know, I the rest like I I got killed in room like fucking eight or some shit because I wasn't I just didn't have I didn't I wasn't getting anything that made me powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, run two, I made it all the way to the boss, and then the boss killed me because guess what? I didn't have any <laughs> <laughs> upgrades that like were kind of necessary for that boss or uh, to to progress past that. But by the time I was on that third run, you know, I was. You know, I was dashing. I was in the zone. I was moving. I was kicking ass, man. And uh, and yeah, man. Like I'm just I'm I'm moving a lot faster than I did the first time. It's mm-hmm. basically just my point of that. But Hades, still a great game. Still lovely. Um, still so much fun to play and to unlock all these things. And you you forget how much fun it is to just unlock all the skills mm-hmm. and so forth. And like yeah. I'm I'm still unlocking weapons. Like I've got two weapons unlocked mm-hmm. right now. And you know, and I'm sitting here looking at that shield weapon. I go, oh man, I want that shield weapon. 
Like, give me that shield. I remember that was the first time I ever beat the game was with that shield weapon. I need to get that shield weapon. What was the other weapon? Uh, I think I unlocked the bow first because it was cheap. And then I unlocked the spear because the spear is always my favorite. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spear's good. Spear's that rich. Good. Spear's good. You know? Um, Connor. Mm-hmm. What have you been playing? Well, Elden Ring. Yeah? Yeah, yeah you guessed that right. Yeah? I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I have been for the past week. Uh, so I, I, at a certain point, it gets to just boss rush. You yeah. know? Uh, I fought a boss, and then I fought another boss right after that. Yeah. And then I fought another boss, and now I'm fighting another boss, <laughs> and then after that is another boss, I think two, maybe just one, and there were two optional bosses I hadn't beat. Beat one of them was hard, the other one's the one I'm stuck on. I can go through the main, I want to beat her before I beat the main bosses, the, the required bosses, Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, that's yeah. Melania. I was still on her, uh, I think last time. I heard about her. Hardest Souls boss game, uh, Souls boss I think, we talked about, yeah. I think we've talked about it on this show of the dude who's like beating her a thousand times yes. and is like jumping into the games, let me solo her type shit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I thankfully, I after a past week of playing through her, I just today before I came here, got her down to her second phase. She has two phases. Uh, to a quarter of her health. Oh, uh, there you go. Less than a quarter. Like, she had three hits left. You're there. Yeah. You're there. Yeah. It's just execution now. Yes. Now it's yeah. just perfect execution because you basically almost need perfect execution <laughs> to do this goddamn boss of how... <laughs> tight her 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 hits are they heal every single time oh my they have god large hit box hit boxes R- ridiculously hard and it has very little time for you to hit her back though i have gotten it down to a system using a specific skill that has made the fight very fun so i'm not going through this fight bored out of my mind and it even it's gotten to the point where the set first phase i can usually just knock her out no problem at all pretty expertly some of the best gameplay i've had in a souls game uh happens during those moments where i do her really well mm-hmm. so she's a fun boss but at the same exact time she's ridiculously hard which i'm fine with but also cheap is all hell cheap which is, is why hell. she's the hardest boss in all of souls souls history in my opinion right uh and hopefully by next week i will not be fighting her anymore she'll be dead best of luck to you my friend yeah yeah but after that i'll be done with the game and uh new game plus will then start and then after i beat that new game plus then i'll start playing other games I'm joking. So, Connor, I'm joking. speaking of playing other games, <laughs> we have an announcement. Yeah. We have an announcement to make. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a new segment coming on into the show here. One thing that we have never really done yet in a year and a half of doing this show. Uh, we're going to do a video game book club. Mm-hmm. This is something we sort of uh, titled TBD. Right now, we're just going to call it the video game book club. You're not going to see the final result of it for a month. So, we yeah, have time yeah. to hash Hopefully, it we, have a t- we have a title by the time we have our first you know book club episode and i'm still debating on whether it'll be a breakout thing or if it'll just be attached to the podcast who knows um but every month we're gonna sit down on the side and play a game on the side and we're not gonna talk about it in the what we've been playing segment we're gonna Mm -hmm. save all the opinions all the thoughts for the final review episode that'll happen uh the first episode of uh so this will be so this is we are in may Mm -hmm. hold on Hold on. It'll be two days before. months work. So this uh, this is coming out the end of May. So we're not counting uh, May or we're not counting June here. This will essentially be be June's game uh, that we're playing here first. So the first episode of July, which is uh, the 4th, July 4th, 4th of July, everybody, mm-hmm. 2022. That on Sunday. Huh? That's on a Sunday then, huh? No, it's on a Monday. So, oh. Because the, we record on Sundays. So oh, comes yeah. Out on so Mondays, come out on Monday. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so July 4th, 2022, uh, we will have our first episode of the video game book club, the two pennies, the, the, the two penny game club. Possible. Maybe. Mm-hmm. There we go. That, no was off the, that was off the cuff. Mm. That was not terrible. Uh, the two penny game club or whatever we fucking figure out for mm. a title. Uh, we've decided is going to be the first last of us. Mm-hmm. So I got to put my playthrough on the pause right now. I got to I got to stop doing mm-hmm. that. We're going to do play. Uh, we're going to play the last of us now. A young Philip Shoemaker listened to last week's episode. and was like, oh, dude, I'd love to do that. Phil, you can't play the last of us, buddy. I'm sorry. It was it was Connor's it was Connor's it was Connor's suggestion. Uh, um, and which I was went taken along with by it. you. We guess, but yeah. 
Phil, you and I play video games, hype, H-Y-E-P, every Tuesday, twitch.tv slash stupidity games, and that's on the docket, buddy. You gotta play, you gotta play Last of Us for, for hype, man. Sorry about you. Uh, so, this first one, Phil, you can't play. But, <laughs> I'm assuming you're gonna get a message later on at some point. He'll be like, man, fuck you. <laughs> uh, but it was your idea, so it's your fault. Um, so, yeah. Uh, July 4th, we're going to have a full review breakdown. We're going to go in depth. It'll be probably 30 minutes or whatever of The Last of Us uh, Part 1 remastered for the PlayStation 4. Also, we're, there's a state of play next week. All these rumors about The Last of Us remake happening. The timing feels right. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's still said that last like the rumors are saying Last of Us remake is coming this year mm -hmm. and it's going to be our fall title from PlayStation, which we'll see. Uh, but, you know, it. I, it just kind of feels right to have this in the can yeah. ready, you know? Um, so we're going to do that. And then what's fun about our, our, our video game book club is that, uh, we're going to be ranking them. So mm -hmm. I'm going to keep a list. I'm going to keep a Google doc, a full list. And, uh, it'll be every game we play. We'll rank in this list and we're just going to make the definitive top 10,000 video games of all time list. Mm -hmm. It'd be good. Can we even... We can't even live for 10,000 more months, right? Like, that's not that's not a thing we can do. Future has lots of things in store. Can you have, like, an Elysium situation? I think they could extend their lives oh in that God. movie. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I didn't that watch one. that movie. Yeah. That movie's supposed to have Eminem in it. So it was supposed... I always think that whenever I watch that movie. It's like, that's, that could be Eminem right that now. That could have been Eminem, but it was Matt Damon. Yeah. It was Matt Damon. Well... Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for your Two Penny Games cast episode 96 thank you so much for watching everybody play along with us play the last of us with us uh the, over this next month or so shouldn't be that long it's like a 10 hour game should be pretty easy i yeah. probably won't even start until next week probably yeah. the week after that no we're not rushing that one no no there's no need for that it's when we hit an open world game where we're like fuck we gotta put 40 hours into this mm -hmm. bitch god damn yeah thankfully there'd the be games we played before so we'll try and you know we, we, we can do it we can most probably it. We'll play games we never played before sure. as well you know yeah you know, it'll come we need to say I, I was talking to you uh off mic about this i need to find like a roulette wheel like program or oh, something already, i already know put, one. like a grab bat you know one? Oh yeah oh yeah, okay yeah, yeah. great we'll do, figure that out later anyways ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching remember you can catch us every monday 8 a.m central time youtube.com slash two penny games cast and mainstream podcast services of your choice please like follow subscribe uh, share it with a friend. We really would appreciate it. Uh, remember, you can catch us live every Tuesday, twitch.tv slash two penny games for hype. Have you ever played? Phil is going to be continuing his playthrough of Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Keep an eye out for the Sly 1 and Crash 2 after the hype reviews coming soon. Uh, or go check out some like Metal Gear Solid 3 full first time playthrough with, with a young Phil Shoemaker uh, live right now at the youtube.com slash two penny games cast uh until next time everybody have a great time and uh connor say goodbye to the people goodbye